there's a thing called live resin terpenes. Uh, the problem with that is that that's an oxymoron. That just can't exist. <laughs> Today we're talking about extraction, and to join me is the wonderful Patrick. Patrick, hello. Thank Say you. hello to the people it's right there in the here. camera. My name is Patrick, and I work here at Modern Herb Co. What? Well, what's your role? I am the director of strategic partnerships. Very cool. Well, we're here to talk about extraction today because our rosin versus resin video was like one of the most viewed videos we had. So this is kind of a follow-up video to talk a little bit more about that kind of thing. So can you please remind our audience and me what a distillate is and how it's used in the industry? Uh, distillate is, you know, short for distillation, right? Okay. So you're taking extracts out of a plant, whether you're making essential oils or juice or, in this case, cannabis oil. Yeah. Uh, you're going to extract that out. And what comes out is a crude extraction. Mm -hmm. And then the distillation process is refining that crude extraction Got it. into something that is more clean or pure is the thought process there historically. What was that like little qualification historic? So in cannabis, it's kind of like if you started with good inputs, yeah, yeah, yeah. you would have a nice clean crude extraction. And if the crude extraction was quality enough to smoke, you wouldn't turn it into a distillate. Right. Think of wine and brandy. So all the top winemakers in the world, mm -hmm. if their wine, if their grapes don't have the season they want and they go and they, they make that wine and that wine doesn't meet the standard, the standard. they want, they're going to sell that to somebody who makes brandy and they're going to gotcha. distill that wine into a brandy or a liquor. Gotcha. Right? And that's because it didn't meet the quality standard. So I like to think of distillation as remediation. But ideally, you're kind of saying some, if it is like a really good product or plant, right, then you actually don't really need to do the distillation process because it's already pure. Bingo. So what is full spectrum then when we're talking about cannabis and how is that different from distillates? So when we think about the sp spectrum in general, right, we're yeah. talking about um, kind of all the constituents that might normally be present in mm -hmm. a raw flower, right? So the, the, the flower itself is the origin of the spectrum. And okay. as you create extraction, you're going to move further away from the, from that origin spectrum. Right. And so distillation is multiple steps away from the origin. So you have the plant and then you have the crude extraction mm -hmm. and then the distillation, that kind of refined, um, that refinement of the crude extraction. So full spectrum would be saying we're taking all the constituents that are normally present in the flower. Yeah. And then we're making an oil that's representative of, of those constituents. Flour. And then the process of distillation just unfortunately separates a lot of those constituents mm -hmm. and kind of forces either a reconstruction or a readdition. Kind of like if you were making a juice and it wasn't that great of oranges or lemons or apples that you were starting with, mm -hmm. you might need to add in sugar. You might need to add more things in. That's where we get versus, the sunny D versus the fresh orange juice metaphor. Yeah. And so um, I think, you know, I think it's easiest for people to think about it from the wine perspective because yeah. it's something we kind of all know. But at the end of the day, what you're really dealing with when we say full spectrum is it's really specifically we're talking about cannabinoids and terpenes and really cannabinoids and terpenes in a ratio that they would be found in the plant normally. Gotcha. So when you distill something, those terpenes are falling off. Fats and lipids are falling off and there's benefits to a degree to that. Mm -hmm. But overall, what you're doing is you're stepping further away from the plant. Gotcha. And I think the reason we all, you know, get extracts is because we want something that's representative of the plant, mm -hmm. um, but we want it in a different delivery method. So is full spectrum is like, so if you pull it and it's like crude oil, is that full spectrum or full spectrum is the thing? That's what this full spectrum yeah, is. Yeah, correct. So, so I guess- When you do the thing of adding all the things back, it's not full spectrum anymore. Correct. So you kind of have like three, I guess four primary tiers. You have the origin, 
Mm-hmm. Then you have the, the, the <laughs> you have the crude extract, which is going to be a full spectrum extract. Um, and that even without getting too far off into the weeds, okay. that is going to be dependent all upon your input material, right? Uh. So if you made an extraction from nothing, <laughs> I know we're getting into the weeds, <laughs> puns intended. Right. Um, no, but in, in short, you've got kind of four stages. You've got the origin, then you've got a crude extract, which is going to have full spectrum. And then <gasps> distillate, distillate is going to be a broad spectrum. Yeah. And then you have isolate, wow. which is single compound, okay. right? So realistically, if you were saying, I want to consume something that is as close to the origin as possible, mm-hmm. then a distillate is, is it's broad spectrum, has some of those constituents, but it's missing a lot of the key components that you might otherwise love. How is full spectrum made? Yeah. Um, really, it's, it's when you are taking... It really does start with inputs. I think at first, you've probably all heard this before, fire in, fire out. If you start with trash, like stuff you would sweep up off the ground, and you're just like, oh, that's the trim that was the leftover that people wouldn't want to smoke. Let's pull out of that whatever we can. Like technically, that extraction could be full spectrum. If you add all this stuff back in. Well, it's not even about adding the stuff back in. It's just like, think about it. Like if you were going to go roll a joint, you would take whole buds and you grind them up and you would put that in there. You wouldn't go take like, and you can, if you're desperate, take the bottom of the bag, I'm not desperate. the little, the duff, the shake at the bottom of the bag. But we all know that's like harsh. So it's the same thing. If you extract from that, like technically that could be a full spectrum extraction. But really what we're saying is we're, if we go and you take a bud and you smoke it, that's going to have primarily THCA with a little bit of Delta nine, maybe some CBD, maybe some CBG, THCV. There could be a a whole wide variety of constituent of cannabinoids in there and terpenes, right? So that's the other side of it. So the real key with this, I think is, You know, is there an accurate representation of the way the plant normally presents its cannabinoids and terpenes? Is that then just concentrated down into an extract? That's full spectrum. So then from there, if you take that crude extract because it doesn't taste good, because you started with bad buds Mm -hmm. and you have to distill it, now those terpenes are going to fall off in that distillation process. And you could add them back in, but often that's not the case because that's what makes it taste gross is because you had bad terpenes. Gotcha. So usually what's happening is to make a full spectrum extract is it's just a a single extraction. It's the crude extraction is going to be a full spectrum extract and then the problem with that is just sometimes if it wasn't if there weren't good inputs and it's not like an ideal product then you have to add more stuff in and then okay correct for someone who's only ever had a distillate cart what might they experience the first time they try a full spectrum i think first and foremost is going to be taste right you're gonna because often again as we talked about earlier terpenes are the main constituent for flavor and and flavor town often when you get Non full spectrum extracts, mm-hmm. aka distillates, they're usually flavored with some sort of botanical flavoring, which that's fine. It's not for me, but also you like, like the real thing. Sometimes it's nice when you're like, "Hey, I'm soccer mom, and I'm on the side of the field, and I don't want totally. people to know I'm getting ripped." Yeah, um, it's. I t- think <laughs> I'm just imagining making a flavor like white wine because that's accepted. <laughs> I would like a Chardonnay flavored <laughs> vape. <laughs> I'm a classy lady. What can I say? <laughs> Put a few ice cubes in there for me, please. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I think the first thing is going to be flavor. You're going to notice taste, um, that it's going to be more of a rich, earthy flavor and more true to the plant. So like when you crack open a bag of buds and you smell that and you're like, ooh, that's pungent and I like it. Yeah. You know, that's not something you get out of a distillate cart or out of a distillate extraction. So full spectrum, first and foremost, flavor. And then number two, the high that you get, more full bodied. Oh, nice. Um, This part's going to get a little weird. I have always liked to quantify my highs in like graphs. So like a distillate high is going to be really sharp and fast. It's going to spike up really quick and then it's going to spike down. Oh yeah. And this is more versus a full spectrum is going to be like, it's like, Ooh, it's like pushing you from the back. It glows a little bit more. It's got a little more like there's just body to it. So 
So you're going to notice a more just true to plant experience. And and when I say true to plant, that is all encompassing of both flavor and the way that that high lasts. Like, I don't think I've ever, you know, smoked a joint and then in 20 minutes not been high. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm usually it's like, okay, I'm high for like an hour or two on that. Um, versus like a dissolute cart. Sometimes you're like, whoa, blast off, incredibly high, really quick, because it's this really high amount of THC delivery, but then it also fades away a lot quicker. So um, what I've noticed, the third thing would be um, often there, I think there's a better value for the end user Mm. in a full spectrum cart because you can take one rip and you don't need to go back to it in 30 minutes. No. Right? You're a server. You're on your break. You go out, you take your little distillate rip, boom, you're going to feel the need to go back out in 20 minutes again to take another cigarette break. Oh my God. You take a full spectrum rip. You might not do your job as well. I'm going to be honest because you're probably high. You couldn't pay me to get high and then go work a serve, like work a brunch shift. I would like be crying. I don't think that I would have the patience to deal with people if I wasn't high Yeah, in service. So we're, we're opposites in this. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's your day off. Yeah. And you take a dissolute pen and you rip that at the start of like some chores. Yeah. You're going to be like 10 minutes into the dishes and be like, um, kind of need another rip. Totally. Versus you take a full spectrum extract and you smoke that. You clean the whole dang house. Could be if it was a sativa, maybe. But some people, you know, some people act, some people react to indicas that way too. It's wow. really, you know, everybody is different. Are dissolute carts more about <laughs> profit than quality for most companies? Um, I think it's an interesting question. Hmm. I think it's a good question. Thank you. Um, some people say the best question. Yeah, I think here's what it comes down to. It's really, it's, I would, I would actually say it's, I would argue that it's less about profit and it's more about ease of manufacturing. If you want to find inputs that are high quality enough to survive as a standalone crude extraction as mm-hmm. a full spectrum extract, you have to be more selective in the material you source. Amen. Versus if you want to make a distillate cart, you're kind of just getting down to that like raw basic. You're just like, ah, give me the THC and I'll flavor it with whatever right. I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that means that your availability of inputs broadens significantly. Yeah. So now rather than having to buy like an example, if you make a live resin or a live rosin product, you have to start with a whole bud that hasn't been sitting in some container for six months. It mm-hmm. still has trace amounts of THCA in it, right? You have to actually start with something that's quality. You know, you could take any trim from a thousand different strains and then remediate the THC out of that Mm -hmm. into a THC oil. Right. So to me, it's, I guess you could translate into, yes, it's about profits because, but to me, it's really about, um, it's about laziness and manufacturing. Gotcha. It's much. Which can lead to profits. All connected. But yes. Yeah. And so it's like, is it all tied back to just like, ah, just put something in there, sell it to them. They'll buy anything. Mm -hmm. Yes. And is that like a derivative of putting profits over quality? Absolutely. But I think at the end of the day, the short answer to that question is yes. And it's because it's just easier to manufacture a distillate cart because you can throw fucking anything in there and then just the cool. Now put some fake terps on top of it and no one knows the difference. Well, is and so with Modern Herb Co., what is it, what's like the practice here? So we really are focused on replicating the experience that the plant provides. Yes. We are full we spectrum. Make cannabis goods and we are cannabis people. And I think, you know, maybe I need to say we are we make hemp goods because we are hemp people for legal purposes, but the reality remains the same. It's both. Um I think it's printed on our shirts. I think I can say that. Um, so like we, we make cannabis goods for cannabis people. And so what we're trying to do is to try to accurately preserve the natural, the the way that the plant naturally occurs. We're trying to preserve that and just put it into a pen Mm -hmm. or into a, a dab puck with as little adulteration as possible. Now, is there room for that in the industry? Yes. Do I, am I, do I think that people who make those products are bad people or are making crappy products? No. But there's what we want to do and what we think is the best thing for consumers. Right. And so for us, we really try to have a focus on full spectrum extracts yeah. as often as we can. And there are, you know, there are still times and places to make distillations and and to use them and they're still valuable. But I think the more you can 
stick to um, the natural kind of arrangement of the plant, mm -hmm. the better. And 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 a full spectrum extract is doing that far more than a distillation. Truthfully, our best product that we've launched to date is my. Okay. It's hands down my favorite uh, product is our tiny tokers. It's a Aww. little tiny baby toker, oh. um, and it has um, a small amount of live rosin in there, mm -hmm. and it really is, when you taste it, like if you've ever smoked Tropicana Cherry, and you ever smell the bag of Tropicana Cherry Buds, and then you taste this vape, mm -hmm. you're going to know that that is 100% an accurate extraction from the flour into the yeah. oil. So, um, yes, we really try to focus on full spectrum products. So I've heard that some brands and companies inflate their full spectrum claims. And how can consumers, if they're wanting full spectrum, like make sure that's the product they're getting? That's a difficult question to answer. And, and the reason it's a difficult question to answer is because the nomenclature within the industry is not standardized. Okay. So any brand can just say that they offer um, a live resin product. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the things that we've seen and the biggest adulteration of this is um, there's a thing called live resin terpenes. Uh, the problem with that is that that's an oxymoron. That just can't exist. Oh, okay. It, it really, the reason for that is because a live resin means, well, it's a resin. So it's a whole crude extraction. It's a whole crude oil. And within that crude extraction are terpenes that naturally occurred in the plant yeah. and we've just captured them in this extraction. So then when people take a distillate and they put quote unquote live resin terpenes on top of that, that's then then call it live resin. That's there's no real way for the customer to know that. Yeah. Now I will say if some cases you can see it and they'll on the back of the box, if they actually list their ingredients, you'll see, it'll say, you know, cannabis oil, comma, live resin terpenes, that right there is the easiest way to tell that somebody's kind of trying to pull the wool over you. Unfortunately, without standardization of nomenclature, it is it can be difficult for the average consumer to know before purchasing. Yeah. But I think back to what we were talking about earlier, the way it tastes and feels after purchasing, that's where you can kind of tell the difference. Like if it's kind of a short-lived high that doesn't really taste a lot like cannabis yeah. or like you buy three different carts that are supposedly three different strains, but they all taste exactly the same yeah. and they all have the exact same THC percentages. That's a pretty good way to know that they're just taking a base distillate and flavoring it on top. So... Yeah.